There are several ways to go about animating tank treads in Lightwave. I thought we could uh, take a look at a real quick way of doing it with a morph. So we're going to recreate something similar to this and we're going to have the treads actually go around the track. So let's go ahead and close this down and we'll build our tank treads. I'm going to hop over to just one window okay, and we'll start creating the uh, create a spline that's going to be our basic shape that our treads are going to follow. So I'm going to start by creating a disk. I could use the uh, spline draw bezier sketch uh, but I'm actually going to build it from uh, some primitives. So let's just make a big disk and I'll select it, copy, paste, T for move, and I'm going to slide it over, say to here, copy, paste, and I'm going to size it down and bring it down here and copy, paste, and move it here. And what we'll do is we'll use the points from these objects to create the, the spline. I'm going to go ahead and K for kill polygons. I'm going to select this point right here, copy, paste, and I'm going to move it right here to the center, roughly in the center, because we'll use that one as well. Okay, I'm going to deselect, I'm going to, I'm going to select and delete some of the points that I don't think I need. I can always put more on or, or take some more away. But I'm just trying to get roughly what I think I'll need. Just selecting these and deleting them. And something like this. And I'll get rid of, that looks like that could be a good, we can delete some if we feel we need to. I'm going to start with this point and I'm going to work my way around. I'm just connecting the dots. I need to select an order in order to create my spline. And almost there. And instead of control P for create spline, that creates an open spline. I'm going to come over to make curve and make closed curve. Okay. So now I've got a complete curve or spline. Um, it's just different terminology for the same thing. Okay, now I just need to make a tread that we can use to clone around this spline. So I'm going to go over to layer 2, put layer 1 in the background, and we'll just create, it could be as complex of a shape as you want, but for this I'm just going to create a basic shape. Something like this, and Let's go ahead and use the knife tool to create a couple segments. Select these two, B for bevel, and I'm just going to bevel up just so we can get, this is the basic look of our object. Okay. Again, we can get as complex of a shape as we want, but I'll, I'll use this. I'll put the spline in the background, and let's just go full screen. And now we need to clone it around. Now I'm not quite sure how many uh, clones I need, how many copies of this I need, so we're just going to kind of play it by ear. I'm going to go over to Multiply, Duplicate, More. We'll do Rail Clone. And let's just try 30. And actually, that's pretty close. Um, rail Clone 32. Okay, that's close enough for me. There's some spacing in there because I'd, I'd want to build uh, a track as well, but we're just going to work with these plates that we're going to have rotate around this area. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select, I'm going to undo, I'm going to select this one, copy, paste into layer 3, go ahead and do a rail clone again with the same settings. Okay, and now I'm going to take both the spline and the plate and I'm going to move those. I'm going to move it one distance so I'm selecting the points uh, that make up the the plate but then also the point that's in the center here. That's going to be my starting point for my rail clone and I'm going to move this forward. So I'm going to zoom in and I want to move it forward so that it lines up. I'm just zooming in so I can get pretty close so it lines up with the other plate that's right in front of it so we can have it move forward. Okay. Now with that done, I'll put the spline back in the background. Multiply, duplicate, rail clone. We'll use the same number. Okay, so why did we do this? Well, it looks like we have the pretty much the same thing. If I toggle between 2 and 3, pretty much got the same thing. Okay. Well, we're going to we're going to morph layer 2 into layer 3. 
So I'm going to put that in the background so that we have layer 2 in the foreground, layer 3 in the background. Come down here to M for morph. And I could make a new morph um, down here and move each one of these pieces. Or what I can do is come over to map, choose background to morph, give it a name, and we'll call this um, tread roll. Okay. Okay. And it just, it doesn't look like it did anything. It, it shifted a little bit, but if I grab, say, this tread right here and I move back to base, see how it's now here? So everything has moved. Uh, each one of these plates has moved one spot over. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and delete I'm just going to keep this one that has the, the morph that we just created. And I'm going to delete the spline because we don't need that. Cut. Paste. Okay, so now I have um, everything I need for my, my treads. I'm going to go ahead and save this. We'll just call this treads001. Let's send it over to layout. And now that we have this here, we just have to set up our animation. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, open up, I'm going to take advantage of that morph. So I'm going to open up the object properties under deform, add displacement. Let's choose morph mixer, double click to open up that panel. Okay. And I'm just going to size it down so we can fit it right down here. Okay. And we just need to decide uh, how many frames we want to work with. I'm just going to jump over to frame five and I'm going to morph it a hundred percent. You can actually see if I scrub through, it's already starting to rotate, but of course it only rotates once and then stops. So I want it to continue to rotate. I want it to continue to look like it rotates all the way around. So I'm going to hit E for envelope and select the keyframe on five and have the post behavior be repeat. So it's going to go and morph, drop down to its original location, but it's going to happen uh, you know, over one frame and just repeat, 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 repeat. So you're not going to see that it's repeating. We're going to see it down here. I'm going to leave Morph Mixer open so you can see actually what's happening. And now I'm going to push play. And we've got our treads rotating. They're, they're traveling around the, uh, the tread. They're actually not. They're only moving one plate over, then starting over and repeating. And we can see that here. See how it keeps um, popping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it's, it gives the appearance that it's going all the way around. But if I colored one of these, we wouldn't see that color going all the way around. We would see it going one forward and then it'd pop back one forward. But because all the, the treads are identical, it doesn't matter that we're, that we're just having it ping pong back and forth because, or, or, you know, starting over and repeating because we won't be able to tell. So this is a real quick way of going about doing uh, tank treads. There's several ways of doing it. If you need it to actually travel around, you could use cloth dynamics with hard link. But for a quick and dirty way of doing tank treads, uh, this is definitely a way that'll work. If you want to do a uh, bicycle chain, that would, this technique would work as well.